ones I've noticed yeah. who are like friendly towards Destiny. Yeah, I can only think of three off the top of my head. That's yeah, including Daryl Thomas. Yeah. Um, and they have—I think they have like one or two or three uh, Chinese people yeah. or Asian people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, th- I think they have. I ha- they, and I know they have a couple of members uh, whose, whose uh, origins are uh, Hispanic, but that's about <clears> it. The, the rest of them are predominantly, uh, you know, they come from like a the Caucasian background, yeah. you know, and probably even a middle class. It might actually be because, not, not because they are necessarily so racist, they more benefit from it, but the world is racist. In fact, it's just people of color in lots of areas, especially America and uh, Africa, just mm. have real problems. That's true. That's true. And the people in Destiny, I mean, if you look at them, they are pretty much on the lower end of the income chain, and still they live very comfortably, and they can afford to pay people on a farm somewhere. Yeah. So they're pretty well off, mm. and I think uh, race is a... Is a could, <clears throat> contributing factor to that well even even if it was that way i mean if they if they really were you know advocating equality and oneness they would have some sort of um they would have some sort of repertoire or some sort of you know uh reach out program Mm. to the local community and it's just not there block for sponsorship they just don't want to block for sponsorship Some people have real jobs. They cannot blog 24-7. <laughs> it makes you wonder if, uh, <clears throat> you know, if Destiny was, like, trying to set up, like, um, you know, meetings and, I don't know, perhaps even preaching in the streets and, you know, the towns of uh, South Africa, if they'd actually have no, any kind those of... Those white breads were in the black streets of South Africa and they start preaching equality. Yeah. People would start throwing stuff at them. <laughs> they probably would. <laughs> that might be quite dangerous. Mm. Make you wonder, though, you know, if they could actually... If they had the ability to, would they reach out to different communities? Can they? Have they even tried? Have they, have they even the conception of doing so? Or is it simply... Well, as seems evident, that they... I yeah, I haven't seen any evidence of them doing that. I mm. mean, so far that I know of, they're, they're sort of a... I know that they're they're talked about, uh, that Destiny and the Farms talked about in the local papers mm. and the, the local journals. Like, they, they, they have been... They have... The, 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 the local, like, uh, news or whoever does the, you know, the news uh, over there has taken notice of them. Yeah. And... Uh, but there's sort of like a weird curiosity, you know. Mm. And Wasn't there this one woman who said she was on TV with the Equal Money shirt? I think she was from Sweden or Netherlands or something around that corner. And then she got the microphone. I think she joined the Occupy people. And then she talked about equality and everything was fine. And then she started advertising Destiny and people were starting to boo her out. Ooh. <laughs> because she was trying to advertise her own little scheme thing. <laughs> they were just like, we're occupied, fuck off. <laughs> well, that's fair. I mean, um, I, I went to um, the Occupy, the London Stock Exchange, just for a day to see what it was like. And uh, there are a few people there who are a bit potty, a bit weird. There are some like fairly mainstream uh, like um, people representing the uh, like socialist like workers, uh, like people. Who were basically, you know, about you know, uh, giving more power to the unions, um, you know, selling uh, socialist papers and such, and getting people interested in that. But most people were fairly average. There are a few people there who were like zeitgeist kind of people, <laughs> right? But uh, thankfully, I never. <laughs> it's probably a good thing because I don't know what I would have said. But thankfully, I never came across anyone who was quite as bad as any Destonian. So. <laughs> The only bad thing about that is when the the, the people that actually write uh, news articles or like you, you have reporters show up, they will focus on the weirdos. Very true. Because that makes a story. You're not going to focus on like oh Joe Average and the rest of them. Mm. You know, because that's not a story. Especially not for the tabloids. Mm. 
Yeah, there's a really bizarre guy who goes there um, every day, not as part of the uh, the Occupy movement. He goes there anyway, and he's sort of like um, I think he's Irish Jewish, and he's a, a Zionist as well. And he's there wearing uh, like a Star of David and the Irish flag, and he's there dancing around. He's a little old man dancing a kind of jig sort of thing. And it's really bizarre. He's just a little old man, around about I don't know seventy, prancing around. And he's uh, preaching about um, the Holy Land and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm sure many people are put off by that sort of thing because they think, what on earth? You know, it's very easy to be put off by the weirdos, I think. We have those on the street every day. Yeah. People will tell me that Jesus loves me and I'm like, I don't even know the guy. Yeah. That's weird. I'm, you know, I'm sure if there is a Jesus, or if there was, or whatever, in theory, um, that person would be so far removed from any of these uh, extremists that, mm-hmm. you know, if, say, um, whatever his actual original name was, I mean, it, it varies in different beliefs, but say uh, Yeshua, say his name was that, rather than Jesus, which was a Greek name, and um, he would probably be something akin to... Um, a, I don't know, perhaps a John Lennon of the time. <laughs> you know, I, I would like to think, you know, if, if he had ever existed, and, you know, I think he probably yeah. did. Well, my, my, my thoughts on, like, that is, like, you know, when I think about Christ in, in, in those times, mm. you know, he almost fits uh, the bill for some sort of, uh, like, cult leader. Yeah. The only, th- the, only, the only thing that really that stands out to me is that he, he tells people... To go give all your wealth to the poor. He doesn't say give the poor, give all your wealth to me, like say Destiny or some of these other nut jobs, mm. like Colleen Thomas or something like that. Oh yeah. No, he's it, telling telling people. He's, he told people, give your wealth to the poor and come follow me. He didn't say give it to me and then come follow me. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the way Destiny does it. Give all your money to Bernard, and once he has enough, he's going to change something about the world. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he will. I trust yeah. him. Because if he if he has all the money, then we're all equal, you know, equal money system, <laughs> automatically. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely all equal then. <laughs> yeah. EPO, hey. And can't can't approach his exalted level of equality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I prefer it if you just work like normal people. Mm. Oh well, he's a policeman for a while. Give him a break. <laughs> I wonder why he. Uh, you know, stop being a policeman. You know, did he uh, get enough money together? Was it forcible retirement because of something he had done wrong? You know, it could Maybe be speculated upon. Bad policeman. Yeah. He's not up to the, the task. I mean, obviously. Yeah, well, when, I, when, I, when I think about him, he's like a he's like a policeman that was totally into these nutty conspiracy theories <laughs> and into this. Uh, uh, I. I <laughs> Uh, what is it called? The the light workers stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I have nothing against that per se. I just I just don't like what he's doing with this with this group. He is. I, I mean, it's one thing to sit there and preach. It's it's another thing to draw people in to to run a scam and to to uh, to take advantage of these people. Yeah. Yeah. You know him and all these other other. Uh, uh, I mean, there. I mean, there are far more more popular like uh, uh, nuts like him. I mean, you got like uh, what is it? Uh, 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 Randy James. He brings up oh, yeah. Sylvia Brown. Mm, Do you know mm. who Randy James is? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. James. Uh, James Randy. Randy yeah. Uh, uh, he brings up Sylvia Brown a mm. lot, and that's that's a similar kind of character. You know, she's she's just taking advantage of people. Very true. I've seen her work before. In fact, I was interested in that um, a number of years ago. I came across a couple of her books and CDs and became very interested in that kind of uh, thing. At the time, I was involved in the New Age myself and uh, spiritualism and other, other beliefs. And she seemed to be really good, you know, from a kind of slightly, I don't know, pickled brain perspective, which I was in. And... I watched some of her um, videos here on YouTube, but then I came across the 
James Randi videos. And those videos, at first, I was like, well, he can't know. He can't say she's wrong. You know, it was kind of like a cult mentality, I suppose, like a level of blind belief, because I already believed in, like, uh, you know, psychics and mediums and that kind of stuff. Right. And eventually, it kind of sunk in. Eventually. And I realised, well, hang on. She's just a really bad cold reader. 